and we're back with TSPN, and we have with us John Settler. John, how are you doing? Very fine. Good morning. How are you? Okay. Now, you're with uh, you're the same program, but a different group that you're doing it with now. Correct. And that, <coughs> hey, that Logan, group is, yes. you've gone uh, on, away man, from ACA. Access Youth and Family Services, okay. which is a, a new organization which is um, working on a number of programs for children and families. Um, a, a lot of stuff with, a, with the high school kids, mm -hmm. the junior high kids, elementary kids, um, family service programs, okay. and the court appointed special advocate program. And that's what you're specifically here for, the CASA program. That's, that's my agenda today. That's right. That, that's your baby, I guess, and, and you've done this for a long time. But uh, again, once again, uh, for people that haven't watched before and people that need a refresher, what is CASA? Court Appointed Special Advocates Program is a program in which we train volunteers to work with kids whose families are going through the dependency court so that they are under the supervision of the court for no fault of their own. Mm -hmm. And it has been shown that it is very beneficial to have an impartial, non-parent, non-authoritarian, outside objective uh, person to spend time with them, make a relationship with them, make sure their needs are being taken care of, and report that back to the court. I um, I recently had to grade some scholarship applications from schools, and uh, I'm a little confused. I saw some kids who were uh, judged to be wards of the court, but their parent was still the one signing for them, it, it looked like, because you needed a parent's signature on there. Now that, Albeit these kids are probably seniors in high school now, so does that mean they've been through some challenges in their life? And been, they, they or their families have been through some kind of challenges, and um, those are the kinds of kids that we uh, could very well be working with. Mm -hmm. um, some of those kids are still living at home, some of those kids are in, in out-of-home placement with a relative or with foster care. Um, some of them develop challenges of their own because of the, the life experiences that, that they've had. And some are, they've reunited with their family though because the parents, the, a parent was a signer on the application. But I gotta tell you, some of these kids are extraordinary. They, with the challenges they've had in their life because they all had to write essays, um, the ones that have been through those experiences have, a lot of them have really succeeded well beyond their own expectations, not to mention anybody else. Some of the, some of the kids have very good resilience and, and can bounce back. Mm -hmm. Everybody can bounce back. Some of them take a little more assistance and a little more help. And those are the ones we particularly need to be focusing on. Those are the ones who can succeed if they have that opportunity to have somebody on their side. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to be, on their side. Uh, you can't ask these questions or do a study because it's all confidential information once you get into the, the family court issues. But it would sure be interesting to know if they had CASAS volunteers helping them along the way, which I bet some of them did. It, it, uh, it would have been interesting, and, and you're right, we did scholarship reviews for another organization that I work with, and there's some phenomenal stories. Mm -hmm. But we, at CASA, are, are part of the resources available to help all kids have that resiliency, realize their potential, and succeed. What, what does it take to be a volunteer? I know it's a, it's a commitment of time. Other than having to put up with me? <laughs> Yeah, they, that, they, that's a big one. That's a big, they have to have time to spend with the kid, one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. and develop a relationship that may end up being a lifetime relationship. And number two, they have to have a good heart. Mm -hmm. I'll train them to take care of all the issues that they might encounter and all the things that they're required to do. Mm -hmm. All they have to do is be willing to come and work with the kids. But they have to go through an initial training period, too. We right? have a training period. And, and how cover a lot of a lot of topics. How long is that? Uh, does it take for people to go through the training? About thirty hours. Okay, and that that's not all in one week though. So they that's over a course of what a three or four weeks. Three or four weeks, and I, I offer it at the convenience of the people who are interested. Mm -hmm. If they if, if nights work, I'll do it in the nights. If we, daytime works, I'll fine. Well, we're, we're flexible on all those things. When you're working with volunteers, you need to have a team and a, par a partnership. Mm -hmm. If you're getting a paycheck, 
maybe you can be expected to do things. If yeah. you're volunteering, it has to be a, a mutual agreement, and that's how we operate. Everything's got to be mutually agreed upon as, as reasonable. Is this kind of like a, would you give a similarity to like big brothers, big sisters, or it's not quite that intensive? It's even more intensive. More intensive, okay. It's, a, it's the same concept, the mentoring concept, to make the relationship, doing activities, making sure things are, are, are working well for the child. But our difference is these kids are under the supervision of the court, and the court needs to know how they're doing and if their okay. needs are being taken care of. So that's the extra layer that we offer that Big Brother, Big Sister don't get involved with. Before we run out of time, let's give your uh, contact information so if someone wants to be a volunteer. Very good. 257-1980. Class starts in June. Okay. All right, John. Thank you very much.